before we start, I know that this game is called Poppy Playtime, and I say Poppy's mm. Playtime in this video. Please don't ostracize me. Thank you. Poppy's Playtime is one of the most popular video game franchises among children right now. With three chapters of the game out and chapter four coming soon, along with a movie, spin-off, and side projects, Poppy's Playtime is no stranger to success. Recently, though, I've stumbled across a few posts that question whether this success is earned or if it's stolen. Now, I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw this tweet right here that said, am I crazy or did they trace my render? And I saw this character. I wasn't sure if it was Poppy's Playtime at first until I scrolled down and I saw the post from the actual game developer with the promo art for Chapter 2 and Chapter 3 of Poppy's Playtime. And if we look here <laughs> at the Chapter 3 post, this character is the exact same character from Flo's post. If we scroll down a little more, they even give us a little comparison video, and you can tell one for one that it's an exact trace of their render. We did eventually get the devs to reach out to Flo and say like, hey, we just like Googled the character and it was the first thing to come up on the Poppy's Playtime wiki. We thought it was official art, so we just used it for our own our own promo page, which is kind of insane to me that the devs didn't even know that it was an official art. But OK, we got we got a resolution. That's fine. But if you look more into this, there's so many more instances of mob entertainment doing sketchy things like this. There's in fact an entire list on Twitter just stating all the things that Mob Entertainment have done that have been sketchy or terrible for the gaming industry, and I want to go down that list one at a time and just talk about the worst ones. So this right here is one of the most upsetting to me. We have a tweet by Meowie here saying that Mob Entertainment traced their render and stole their original character. It states that she was made back in Chapter 1, smells like lavender, their purples are almost the exact same when you compare the main coat to his smiling critter cartoon. Helps kids sleep, long tail, all that stuff. And we see the original art right here, the OC drawings, which, you know, pretty cool character. And then we see the mob entertainment version. It seems awfully similar to me. But if stealing artwork and original characters isn't bad enough, they have also promoted NFTs to children. After Poppy's Playtime Chapter 1 came out, they came up with this NFT project like a lot of game companies were doing at the time, but they were hiding lore of the game behind the NFTs, promoting them to kids, which are their main audience, to get more of the story of Poppy's Playtime. Which, if NFTs aren't scummy enough, putting your own story and lore that you know kids really want to see behind NFT purchases is probably one of the scummiest things I've ever seen a game company do in my life. Now, all this stolen art and the NFTs are a big deal, but they wouldn't be this serious if this game wasn't aimed towards children. Poppy Playtime is one of the most, if not the most, popular horror franchise with kids right now, and it's just monetizing off the Five Nights at Freddy's hype. But when it comes to stolen art and stolen characters and NFTs, kids might not really know the difference between stolen art and official art, and they might not even really understand what an NFT is. And that makes this so much more dangerous because they'll just spend money and support this game and these developers, and that actively makes the situation worse, telling the developers that this is is okay to do. Now, some might argue that Poppy Playtime isn't even a kid's game, but because of the YouTube algorithm and how kids find Poppy Playtime through people doing Let's Plays or the whole Elsa Gate thing, it's turned into a children's franchise, and the developers are just cashing in on that. But if stealing art and original characters wasn't bad enough, how about stealing the entire concept for their game? Here we have a Google Doc made by EKR Coaster. If you're part of the Poppy's Playtime community, you probably know all about the EKR Coaster situation. But just to sum it all up, EKR Coaster was an animator, an independent artist, who made 3D animations, and they were in the style of horror, that a lot of the stuff he did looks like Poppy's Playtime. But when he was making things, he was just kind of testing, trying to figure out how to do animation. And Poppy's Playtime, the developer, came after him for copying all of their assets, stealing some of his assets, calling them their own, and saying that he copied them when he originally made them. This Google Doc is about 20 pages long, and there is a lot of information here. I'll link it in the description if you want to read through it. But basically, they copied his entire work, everything, including the outro song to his animations, stole it for themselves, and called it their own. Now, one of the worst parts of this Google Doc to me is in these Discord messages. So these are messages between Coaster and Zach from Mob Entertainment. And Zach here is telling Coaster that Coaster stole their outro song when this outro song is what Coaster has been using since his second animation years ago. 
There are dozens and dozens of screenshots of Discord messages between Coaster and Zach, and all the manipulation that Zach is doing to Coaster is insane. So if you want to read through this, by all means, look through every page. There is a ton of information here. You can even see here on a tweet by Coaster himself where he compares his character designs to theirs, he compares his art style and their character cutouts to theirs, and they do look eerily similar. He also goes through all the story beats that they stole, everything involving the lore is almost one for one with the videos that he made. Now, this might just be a coincidence, but in that Google Doc it shows that Coaster and the creators of Poppy's Playtime were in the same Discord DMing each other about their ideas, and then the developers just straight out stole them. Now put all of that on top of terrible workplace practices such as this studio being built on crunch work and all the projects being mismanaged, deadlines are unreasonable, a terrible work environment on top of just stealing a bunch of assets, storylines, and ideas is the worst possible thing a game studio could do. Now, in my opinion, Poppy's Playtime is just another money grabbing like mascot horror game that's targeted towards children. The fact that they released chapter one and then they released an NFT project, pitched a movie, pitched a side game all before chapter two even released. It's kind of insane. And I know chapter four is coming out in 2025, but I just have to say it's probably in everyone's best interest to not support this company because these practices are terrible and they're not even apologizing for stealing the art. It's just when they got caught, they finally changed it. Now, in regards to all the controversy surrounding Poppy Playtime, we actually have a Reddit post here by Boring Guarantee that is trying to answer the question of what is going on with this company. And they say, initially, controversy regarded the game's appeal to younger children by virtue of its set and character design. From what I gathered, it seems people mistook it as child-friendly particularly the character Huggy Wuggy. Supposedly, tags like Huggy Wuggy were slipping through parental blocks and made videos of the horror game accessible on YouTube Kids. How true many of the reports are is debatable, however, and both YouTube and TikTok denied this. Then, they sold NFTs of game posters. This got huge backlash for, essentially, putting game lore behind a massive paywall. The owners were in a contract and unable to simply end the NFTs, but donated the proceeds to the Clean Air Task Force and stopped pushing any further NFTs. The theft accusations have been denied by the owner as being related to past drama with the accuser. It's not clear what that drama was, but according to his statement, the accuser is effectively making a scene because of an old dispute. The dispute was supposedly between EKR Coaster, the accuser who claims the game was stolen, and Animation Sins, and does not involve anyone else at Mob Games. There has recently been more, however. An animation studio associated with Mob Game Studio has been accused of some inappropriate animations. Allegedly, they sent EKR Coaster, the person who accused Mob of theft, animations sexualizing his Minecraft character while he was a minor. They've also apparently sexualized Circus Baby, who's possessed by a child soul in Five Nights at Freddy's. Their statement was that it was being overplayed by EKR Coaster, as they, meaning EKR Coaster and the people involved in the animation, were all minors at the time, and they have stated they do not portray Baby as a minor at any time. Now, I actually was able to find the tweet by Enchanted Mob where they were talking about Circus Baby, and it's just as bad as it sounds. The tweet says, Circus Baby, Elizabeth Afton, was 14 during the events of Scott Cawthon's FNAF SL. Since the game was released in 2016, four years ago, that means that today Circus Baby is 18 years old. Which is just disgusting. So I did reach out to both Flo and Meowie and got their permission to use their art and their tweets in this video, like you should get permission from the artist. And if there are any updates on this situation, I'll keep you guys in the know. These artists that had their assets stolen should get paid for their work. They shouldn't just have their content stolen without any regard to their well-being. But let me know what you think about Mob Entertainment and Poppy's Playtime down in the comments. This has been a giant rabbit hole to dive down. I'll keep you updated as the stories progress. I'll see you guys next time.